Hey, good morning everyone. So today we're going to look at another functional group. We're done with the carbonyl family with aldehyde, ketone, and carboxyl. So we're going to move on to another functional group known as amine. Now amine is pretty much our first nitrogen containing functional group. I think I spelled containing wrong. Containing functional group. Okay. Of course, it derived from NH3. Okay, known as ammonia. Now, I guess the question is this where would amine be placed in the priority chart? Now notice I changed my priority chart a little bit. Notice I give it a little space over here. That's because amine is going to come over here. So take a look at this. Amine is actually not very important at all. Very rarely would you even end your name with amine. Right? Even things like triple bond. You will end your name with amine rather than amine. So let's take a look at... Um, different types of amines before we start naming some of these amines. So we mentioned the fact that amine derived from NH3. Of course, NH3 is ammonia. Okay, is ammonia a uh, an organic molecule? Yes and no. Okay, but of course, when ammonia, the H of ammonia is replaced by, let's say, some sort of hydrocarbon. This is then now an organic molecule. It is actually known as a primary amine. So one not means primary. Okay. And primary amine are, um, is something that we're going to focus a lot on. Of course, if you would replace another hydrogen with another R group, they may be the same. They may be different. We have a secondary amine. And of course, lastly, if you have R groups all over, no hydrogen connected to this end, we have a tertiary amine. Now we saw something like this already with alcohol. We did, okay? What's important about these primary and secondary and tertiary amine is through reaction. So when we, when we look at reaction next week, uh, they become very, very important, okay? Yes. We're almost done with nomenclature after amine. I'm going to do benzene with you. And then uh, that's it in terms of organic nomenclature. We're going to move on to looking at uh, organic reactions. Oh, that's going to be fun. Well, we'll worry about that later on when we get there. But let's sort out how we're going to name these amine first today. Oh, by the way, we're, we're going to have a quiz soon, okay? The next quiz will be a quiz about naming things. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to give you 20 molecules, okay, to name. They stem from alkane all the way to benzene. Of course, amine is going to be involved. So we'll look forward to that probably next Wednesday. Anyway, so let's continue on with naming amines. So let's clear this page up. And let's name some of these primary amine. So what we have here, of course, is CH3 and H2. Okay, let me draw this structurally just to let you see exactly what they look like. So you're looking at something like this, All right? So we call this methylamine. A lot of people call it methylamine. Sounds sort of like a drug name. Let's not talk about methylamine. But I don't know anything about that either. So we all know where this name is coming from, right? Methyl, one carbon, amine because of the amine group involved 
Okay. Which means if I were to increase the chain length to two carbon, okay, I'm sure you guys can easily determine that this is called ethylamine. Ethylamine. I like to do this because it saves paper and time. Okay, put NH2 in brackets, and there's five of them in this straight chain. So, obviously, this is a total of six carbon, and this is going to be hexylamine. Okay. Now, for all these examples, we're making the assumption that amine is connected to the terminal carbon or the first carbon. But is that always the case? Of course not. Like alcohol, OH can be anywhere in that long chain. NH2 can also be anywhere in this long chain. So if I have something like this, where my amine is in somewhere in, the, in my chain, we will have to do a little bit of a decision making. First of all, you need to find your longest carbon-carbon chain. Second of all, you want to make sure that NH2 inherit the lower number from the carbon. So it makes perfect sense to go from left to right like that. Okay, so what would you do here? Well, just a couple of options. A lot of people will call it 2-pentylamine. Okay, which is fine. Everybody, you'll see a lot of that. Or pentyl to amine. The latter is better. Okay, and you'll see why when I talk about things like secondary amine later on. Okay, where this one is probably better, it's going to be less confusing for readers, especially when you have multiple of this. Like this example. So stop drawing hydrogen now. Okay, I'm going to have an NH2 here and an NH2 here. How the hell? You know what? Put a CH3 here. How are you going to name this? Well, first of all, we know that this is your longest carbon carbon chain. Second of all, we know that. We want to give these amine the lower number, okay? Which means number five position, you have a methyl group. And then you have these two amine down here asking you, what should I do? Well, there is a way where people would say 2,4-di-heptal-amine. But that is extremely confusing, okay? Especially the die part. So, what I think is the most logical and less confusing sense to do here is that you would say het, okay? Notify your readers that you're, look, you're working with a seven carbon long chain. And in this het, at number two position, and at number four position, there are two amine. Okay, so hep two four diamine. We took away the YL for we took away these YL. Now, can you say heptal two four diamine? Absolutely, no problem. Are you guys okay with that? Hey, let's look at more situation and do more example because that's how we get good at this. And sorry, but you're gonna have to get good at this. So I have another one. Hopefully you guys can pause this video and see if you guys can figure this one out. Okay, I have an aiming here. An amine here, maybe a one more amine here. Okay, so uh, 
let's name this. Okay, you can pause this video and see if you guys can name it. All right, let's name it. Let's find the longest carbon carbon chain. I hope you didn't think that would be an isopropyl, did you? I'm pretty sure I tricked you once. It's not cool for me to trick you twice. So this is a nine carbon amine. Okay, these are side chains. So I hope you said seven eight dimethyl. Okay. Non at position number one, four, and six, we have a triamine. All right, something to keep in mind. And uh, let's take a look at other amines. Let's clear this page. And let me show you exactly why we shouldn't put those di and tri in front of your long chain. Because what if you have something like this? Sorry, this drew it wrong. Here's a secondary amine. Okay, how do I know it's secondary? It's because the N that's not connected to two H's like we saw before. It's actually connected to a CH3 and another CH3. Now, there's two ways of naming this, okay? A lot of people name it commonly. They say this is called dimethylamine. Okay, now I guess you know why we didn't put a di uh, in front of the carbon chain is because you may be mistaken you know with multiple amine groups and secondary amine group okay so we have right here a dimethylamine that's pretty crazy now there's another way of naming this and this is probably something that you might not see a lot of but I will introduce it to you is that you will look at this in this sense okay you will call this a methyl amine okay but however within this amine you have another ch3 group so what i see textbook company do or iupac sometimes do of course is that you would put a bracket here with the letter N, stating that that one of the nitrogen is connected to a methyl group, and you close this bracket, dash methylamine. Okay. Now, I can tell you right now that we're not going to see this very often. We are going to see something like this: a bracket system with nit with an N. Okay. Especially when we get into longer. Uh, or bigger organic molecule where amine is not the most important group. We're going to see a lot. Of that. We're just going to see some of that. But in the meantime, dimethylamine is good enough. Okay. Now, what happened when these two are not the same? What happened if I have this situation right here where one side is a methyl group and the other side is an ethyl group? What do we do? No problem. You would do this. Alphabetically, you need to understand that this is a methyl part counterpart. This is an ethyl part. Okay? To name this alphabetically, you will say ethyl dash methyl amine. Okay? Or some people will say N. Methyl ethylamine. Now, why would some people say that? Let me just erase this for a second and just show you. Okay, let me just erase this, erase that. 
is that you want to give this end the longer chain. This is your long chain, meaning that this is a side grip coming out of an end. Okay, so that's why we end it with ethylamine, because this is true, this is an ethylamine. In one of the ends, you're connected to a methyl group, so it's an end methyl ethylamine. Okay. Now, very quickly, let me just show you a tertiary amine, and then we're going to move on and look at amine not being the important group. So here's a tertiary amine. Okay, I guess if you have two methyl groups, you call it diethylamine, so this will only make sense to be trimethylamine. Okay. What if they're all different? No problem. Alphabetical order, right? So this is called ethyl, methyl, propyl, amine. E, M, P. In alphabetical comparison. Okay. What about the other system? What about the bracket end system? How would that differ? Well, for this, you need to figure out that okay, this this let's say this is your main chain, and people will say this is gonna be N and N dimethyl, because there's two methyl group on those N methylamine. Okay indicating here that both N group is connected to two methyl group. You're talking about these guys. And their longest chain is a methylamine. How about this one? Well, you have to make this guy, of course, your longest chain. That's not surprising. Okay, and you would say here, alphabetically, N, ethyl, so one of the N is connected to an ethyl. We're talking about this guy. And the other N is connected to a methyl. So we're talking about this guy. Close your bracket. Propylamine. Okay. Which is indicating this. So I hope you're comfortable. Okay, it gets really, really messy, of course, if you have, you know, side chains coming out of everywhere and stuff like that. But we're not going to encounter that. In fact, you're not going to see that until probably second year of university, if you make it there. I know you guys all will. All right, let's move along and let's take a look at situations where aiming is not in priority. Let's take a look at this one first. So let's draw. Here we go. Let's put an amine here. It's not going to matter because I'm going to put a triple bond here. Okay. Now maybe I'll put a double bond here too. Why not? Okay. So. In this case, the most important group is double bond. So double bond should inherit the lower number. Okay? Not amine, not alkyne. So this guy should get priority. Hence, that's why we have a priority chart. So here's your numbering is a hept. So this guy right here is only a side group because this takes priority over this, okay? Now, you can even imagine if this was the more important group, how are you gonna name this? You really can't, can't you? So what you're gonna be ending with here is actually an alkene. And what this is nothing more than what we call amino group. Just like how ketone is keto. 
Aldehyde is aldo. Alcohol is hydroxyl. Amine is amino. Amino. Wow, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? There's a macromolecule with the word amino in it. That's right. Amino acids. We're going to see amino acids later on. Where an amine is reacting with a carboxyl to form this thing that you'll see that resemble amino acids, which is the basic component of making a protein. So again, I'll show you later on, okay, an amino acid, and we'll name it together, okay? So check this out. How are we gonna name this? All right, alphabetical order in terms of comparison, you're using A in amino group, okay? So usually you'll see amino coming first, unless you have an aldehyde. So let's do this. So at number four position, you have amino. Okay, uh, this is a hep group. And this is just like what we've been doing all along. Okay, in this hep, at number six position, you have a triple bond. And at number two position, you have a double bond and you're done. Easy, huh? Again, things are very repetitive now because you got the basic understanding. The foundation is there. You're just adding layers. Huh. Lots of layers. All right, here it is. You guys, see if we can make this happen. What would you call this? So pause this video and see if you guys can tell me exactly what this is. All right, I'll come back. After pausing this video and after figuring out what this is I hope you know that this is your longest carbon carbon chain uh, it would be quite embarrassing if you don't say this is carbon number one it's an eight carbon molecule what takes priority of course is this aldehyde group which means everything else is really just side group here so let's let's name this okay at number four position and at number six position, there are two amino here. Diamino. At number five position, I see a methyl. Okay. I see oct. I see a triple bond at position number seven. And do you remember how we end aldehyde? That's right, al. Because there's only one al. We don't have to say one al. Al, it's fine, because it can only be in position number one. Anyway, hope you guys uh, are happy with that, okay? So this is the situation where you have amine being the um, not very important. As you can see, amine usually is not very important. So let's, let's do a couple of more examples, and then we'll call it it for the day. So let's... Erase all of this and let me give you another one to do. This is nice. Okay, this is nice. I draw this structurally because when you see this, you usually see this structurally. The common name for this guy is called adenine. Okay, it's called adenine. Adenine is one of these amino acids. that we say is nonpolar in nature. Now, not well, this thing is very polar. Trust me, this thing is very, very polar, okay? But uh, 
what they mean by nonpolar nature is this part right here. This is CH3. CH3 is a nonpolar uh, derivative. Okay. And uh, it's one of the group of amino acids where I, I guess just very easy to identify. It. Okay. And the reason why this is polar is because this right here, which we call N terminal, is polar. Okay. Here, this is called the C terminal, is also very polar. Now, I'm not here to teach you biology, nor am I qualified to do so. But what you see here is an amino group. What you see here is a carboxyl group. Another word for carboxyl is organic acid. So that's where amino acid comes from. This is why we call this an amino acid. It's because you have an amine group and an organic acid group all in one molecule. So amino acid. And this is adenine. Okay. And of course, I'm pretty sure you know there's 20 of these essential ones, meaning essential uh, is what keeps you alive okay by reading the instructions of dna to build these polypeptide there's 20 of these amino acids grouped in four very simple groups you know you have the polar group non-polar group acidic group and uh, basic group i'm sure somebody will tell you these things but this is one of them Okay, hopefully, and you weren't asked to memorize that this is adenine, of course, there's other ones like you no know, glycine, valine, stuff like that. And ah, you can have a headache thinking about it. All right, now I don't want to call this adenine, nor do you want to call this adenine. What I'm interested in, and what would you call this? What is the IUPAC name for this? All right. Here we go. This will be your longest carbon-carbon chain. Okay, so it's a propyl. I hope this is the numbering that you use and not anything else. So, look, after drawing this in, I hope you guys can figure out exactly how to name this. This is going to be 2-amino. Okay, and this is going to be a propanoic acid. So 2-amino propanoic acid, indicating, of course, that in this 3-carbon carboxyl group, there is an amine group sticking at position number 2. Okay. So the next time somebody says adenine, you say, oh, I know, that's 2-aminopropanoic acid. I wouldn't do that. But it's true. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. No, don't, don't, don't say that. No, just, just be mean. All right, so guys, well, let me just clear this page. And I think I want a lot of room for you to do this last example. Okay. All right. Yeah, one more. How about this? You like that? Just to make it more annoying. Not more difficult. More annoying. How about you guys work with this? Okay. All right. After I'm pausing, I'm going to take this up. And then uh, we'll call it the day. How's that sound? All right. So this is your longest carbon-carbon chain. And by numbering it, we're gonna number it this way. Okay? Aldehyde being your most important group. So, 
Oh, uh, you can ignore that. That's just my iPad calling me for something, but we'll very quickly finish this. So this will be two, three, diamino, okay, seven, cyclohexyl, seven, hydroxyl, four, keto, I think we took care of all the side group now, so let's move on to the longest chain. So this will be a non, 5 i 18, out. All right, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, uh, I'm sure you guys will tell me. Let me know, and I'll put it back on a splash page, what my mistakes are. No, I've been doing that a lot. I make lots of mistakes, everybody know that. All right, so here it is. That's how you take care of these amines. So if there's any question, you know my office hour, and uh, we can talk, okay? All right, we only have one more functional group to name, and that's benzene. So we'll do that next week. And um, for this weekend, I actually have quite a bit of questions for you to do, so make sure you do them, and I will post the answer as soon as possible. All right, have a good weekend now, guys. Oh, okay, let's go back to this. I think I made a mistake here. I just noticed, I think I spelled this wrong. Okay, I'm not sure why, but what I meant to say and spell was alanine. Okay, that was embarrassing because adenine actually means something else. Like, like um, one of the group in your DNA, okay, one of your ribose, okay? adenine actually looks like this, so if I remember correctly, I mean, I'm pretty rusty with these nitrogenous base. It's an NH2 here. This is adenine. This is alanine. Oh, that was embarrassing. Hopefully somebody did not see that. Anyway, this is bye for real now.